I'm busting my ass out there trying to save you, and this is what I get? I said don't. I saw your story. I tried to tell you about that. Yeah, but you didn't, did you? I can't lose this job. Your job is to write the truth. I did. The truth is, I'm the hero here, not you. If that right there doesn't perfectly describe the general reaction from the main community of Marvel's Spider-Man 2 and the recent DLC news, then I don't know what will. But regardless, welcome back true believers and all you spectacular Spidey fans to another very intriguing Marvel Spider-Man 2 related video, where we are going to be diving a bit more in depth surrounding all the broader circumstances pertaining to Marvel Spider-Man 2, and more specifically why the game will not be receiving any type of story detail. DLC of any kind. And rather than falling into the incredibly short-sighted mindset of believing that the reason that we're not getting any DLC for Marvel Spider-Man 2 is because Insomniac is somehow quote-unquote lazy, or potentially believing that the game was unfinished, there is in fact quite a lot more to dissect here than meets the eye. So if you want to fully swing into all these deeper details with me, then definitely be sure to whip that like button and subscribe to the channel for even more Marvel Spider-Man 2 and other Marvel games videos like this down the line. So let's just start off by saying in the few days that have passed since the official announcement from Insomniac themselves that Marvel Spider-Man 2 will not be receiving any type of story DLC, the majority of the general public have not taken that announcement well. Now there were actually a multitude of reasons as to why some people believe that we were going to receive some type of story DLC for Marvel Spider-Man 2 one way or another. Despite the extremely obvious fact that in Insomniac Games never confirmed that Marvel Spider-Man 2 was going to receive story DLC in any way. And in all honesty, a lot of that speculation was pretty valid. The biggest factor obviously being is that the initial installment within Insomniac Spider-Man franchise of Spider-Man PS4 did receive not one, not two, but three separate DLC packs of storyline content in the months following its initial release in September of 2018, where with each passing month in October, November, and December, did receive a brand new chapter of story content for Spider-Man fans to engage with. This was called The City That Never Sleeps. And on top of all this, considering that Insomniac Games themselves have since become another major first-party developer within PlayStation Studios' pipeline, this only further led people to believe that we were going to receive some type of story DLC, considering that the same exact outcome has occurred for a wide variety of other major first-party PlayStation titles. And as I've already iterated several times ad nauseum within previous videos, is that these PlayStation games specifically include Ghost of Tsushima with the Iki Island DLC expansion, Horizon Forbidden West and the Burning Shores DLC expansion, and the one that released the most recently does go to God of War Ragnarok and the Valhalla DLC which upped the ante even further by being priced at absolutely no cost. So, on one hand, I do completely understand why some people might have believed that Marvel Spider-Man 2 was going to receive some type of story DLC at one point or another. Especially within the context of the main game itself, there were a couple of unresolved plot points within the game's core story, like that of the Chameleon and Carnage missions, that could have easily been set up as their own individual hour-long story chapters that would expand after the game's narrative concluded, just like what we saw with The City That Never Sleeps. But on the other hand, there is undoubtedly a much more prominent factor at play here that a lot of people either don't want to acknowledge, or seemingly just don't understand. Because while all those other games that I previously mentioned were made by a ton of talented developers within PlayStation's first-party studios, like that of Sucker Punch, Guerrilla Games, and Sony Santa Monica, absolutely none of them have even remotely come close to the quality and quantity output of Insomniac games. Within the span of only four years ever since Insomniac officially became a first-party studio underneath the PlayStation banner, they have officially released Marvel Spider-Man Remastered on the PlayStation 5, Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales as a cross-gen title on the PS4 and PS5, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, and last but not least is their most recent release yet, with over 11 million units sold ever 
ever since April of this year. That of which clearly being Marvel's Spider-Man 2. All of which have either received or are going to receive PC ports, which have all gone on to enhance the games on an even bigger platform. And to remind all of you is that even in the cases of Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales and Ratchet and Clank Ripped Apart, neither of those titles ended up receiving any type of story DLC of any kind. And yet, absolutely no one was complaining about either of those situations back then. Because everyone clearly knew just how busy Insomniac was with everything that they had cooking within their studio. Which, as we can see now, is that Insomniac Games is clearly experiencing the exact same situation. Where while the team has simultaneously been developing Marvel's Spider-Man 2, they've also been planning out and working on their next major AAA Marvel game with that of Wolverine. And I'm sure that they're also planning out development for Marvel's Spider-Man 3. Whereas given that all those other first-party PlayStation teams only had to worry about one major game that they were working on, Insomniac Games is literally juggling a multitude of massive AAA titles that all of these other PlayStation Studios could only dream about doing. Which has only led me in believing that even a game like Marvel's Wolverine also might not end up receiving any type of story DLC by the time that game releases. So this is all pretty much my fancy way of saying is despite the fact that Insomniac clearly never officially confirmed any DLC was going to be released for Marvel's Spider-Man 2, they're already so incredibly busy on working on so many other games that there was in no way any realistic outcome in which Marvel's Spider-Man 2 would have received a major type of DLC expansion on top of Insomniac Games working all hands on deck to make sure that Marvel's Wolverine could be the best game possible. Essentially, they either had to choose between one or the other, and in this case, they made sure to focus on their next major project. But this now brings up a much more important question. Why exactly were people so adamant in wanting DLC for Marvel's Spider-Man 2, and why are they upset that it's not going to be coming to the game? Well, when you stop to think about it, the main reason why people want DLC for Marvel's Spider-Man 2 is that they simply want to play more more of this game, which in my opinion is the highest compliment that a game could possibly receive. Whether that might have related to experiencing the creation of Carnage within Marvel Spider-Man 2, or possibly showcasing more of Cindy Moon's character becoming Silk within Insomniac's universe, people simply want to see more of this story continue. But in all honesty, or at least in my own personal opinion, is that I 110% believe that including a DLC within Marvel Spider-Man 2 in the same type of scope and scale as that of the city that never sleeps would have ended up being a complete disservice to these characters that were set up in Marvel Spider-Man 2 like that of the chameleon, silk, and even carnage. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Hey. Wait, 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 wait. Now before you start throwing pitchforks at me in the comments, let me explain. In the ending of the main story of Marvel Spider-Man 2, a lot of the main arcs for all of our main characters have actually been fully resolved. After both of the Spider-Men defeat Venom and cure New York City of the symbiote infestation, MJ and Peter are currently living together, where Peter is trying to now revitalize the Emily May Foundation to live up to Harry's legacy, and Miles has now become the main Spider-Man within New York City while Peter is on break, which was pretty much Insomniac's way of saying that all of our main protagonists within Marvel Spider-Man 2 are currently occupied until they inevitably return within Marvel Spider-Man 3 to take on the next major threat with that of the return of Dr. Octopus, as well as the origin of Green Goblin. So rather than Insomniac trying to shoehorn in all these other major plot points for these other characters that were set up in Marvel Spider-Man 2, in minor length narrative campaigns similar to that of the city that never sleeps, it would then make more sense for Insomniac to save these characters to then be utilized more properly later on down the line within their future game installments. And even for me personally, I would have much rather preferred a type of director's cut release for Marvel Spider-Man 2, which may have potentially added any type of additional story content to be included in the main campaign that could have involved more story beats pertaining to symbiote Spider-Man, as well as expanding Venom's character arc, especially considering 
considering that we've already seen other type of director's cuts released for other major first-party PlayStation titles. So making one in a similar vein for Marvel's Spider-Man 2 might have not been all that far-fetched, despite the clear fact that we now know that no additional story content will be added for Marvel's Spider-Man 2, and all focus has now shifted onto Marvel's Wolverine, as well as other potential AAA projects that Insomniac might already have in development. As I've already alluded to several times in the past, and even given statements from Insomniac themselves, is that they have already clearly showcased a blueprint and have expressed interest into making a fully standalone AAA Venom game. Considering the fact that Venom himself was already fully playable in Marvel's Spider-Man 2, and how the narrative director at Insomniac Games, John Paquette, has already stated that he is going to wait and listen to the fans to see what exactly their thoughts are on Insomniac possibly making a spin-off Venom game, which I for one think is full steam ahead. In comparison to characters like Black Cat, Hammerhead, and even Silver Sable, who all got their own individual story chapters within the city that never sleeps, Carnage, on the other hand, is way too big of a villain. And rather than trying to force him into an hour-length DLC in Marvel's Spider-Man 2, I honestly think that having his character further develop in a potential Venom game would not only do justice to the character of Carnage as a whole, but it would also make his narrative inclusion within Insomniac's universe even more compelling if he were to go up against Venom as the potential final boss of that entire game. And for the case of Chameleon, he's actually the most interesting one of the bunch, considering that if Insomniac writes him properly, they could actually make Chameleon end up being a massive surprise reveal to completely catch all players off guard. The imposter was a shapeshifter, so that means it was either Mysterio or the Chameleon. Hey, Chameleon was our idea. We thought of that. And considering that a lot of the main villains within the Marvel Spider-Man universe are either completely reformed or dead by the hands of Kraven the Hunter, I definitely think that Marvel Spider-Man 3 is going to feel like a much more focused story of the main antagonist that essentially started this franchise with Otto Octavius and Norman Osborn. Not to mention all the elements surrounding the symbiote's inclusion in Marvel Spider-Man 2, where, again, depending Depending on how exactly Insomniac wants to handle Venom's character going forward, I do believe that all the lingering symbiote plot points, like Peter still having the anti-Venom symbiote, would be handled far better in a potential Venom game, as well as Marvel's Spider-Man 3. But I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see as to how exactly all this will play out within Insomniac's future. And no matter what title they're working on next, I for one cannot wait. But in the end everybody, that's the video I have for all you today, and please let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you think about this entire situation of Marvel Spider-Man 2 not receiving story DLC? And out of all the much bigger and more important projects that Insomniac is working on, like that of Marvel's Wolverine, Marvel Spider-Man 3, and even a potential Venom game, which one are you looking forward to the most? Let me know what you think, be sure to leave a like on the video, and subscribe to the channel if you did enjoy, and for more Marvel Spider-Man and Marvel games videos like this in the future, thank you all so much for watching, stay spectacular Spidey fans, and until next time, peace out.